it's Eve from the Giano system. We were recently talking with our good friends, the Alexandrite system. You should go check out their channel. It's excellent. And um, we were talking about alters being jealous of each other, which definitely happens. Um, if you're a system, it's normal. Like, I, I think it would be impossible for alters not to get jealous of each other at some time or another, or always for a myriad of reasons. Um, but I wanted to talk specifically to the alters out there who are maybe trauma holders or um, uh, protectors who are considered persecutors who are struggling um, because I think a lot of times those alters feel like they have less value than those that don't hold trauma that are easier in the world or in the system or in their place with things who don't cause trouble um i know jen and our system specifically was like what it would be so much better if i wasn't here um and as our system got closer and her anxiety began to um kind of trickle into other altars she felt especially guilty because uh, like Lil, who doesn't hold trauma and is very carefree, was then having to learn how to deal with this anxiety that she'd never even felt before. And it was so easy for Jen to feel like a burden. Um, so I want to speak to you guys about that. Uh, but I'm going to use an analogy of, and visual aid. So as you can see, we like plants. We love them. We have them in every room of our house. This, this beautiful girl here is Apothos. And people pronounce it differently, whatever. I'll call it Apothos. Um, it's such an easy plant. It's great for beginner plant uh, keepers uh, <laughs> because it, it grows in whatever. Uh, it has very wide tolerances for light, water, nutrients. Um, it, it can take like bright, direct light. And um, I say bright, direct light. If you put it right in the sun, it might send you a little. Same as if you gave it zero sun. Like, but this one, for example, lives in our son's room who has blackout curtains that are almost always shut. And it's like this. And uh, we have another one that lives in our living room window which gets sun several times during the day. And it like spread all throughout the living room. Most, if you kill plants, most of the reason people kill plants is overwatering. So most plants, if you overwater them, will die. This thing, if you overwater it, leaks the excess water out its leaves. It's like, meh, I didn't need that. If you underwater it, meh, it might drop a few leaves, but then, <laughs> You put some water in it and it's like, oh, never mind. Uh, it thrives and it's easy for it to thrive, which is why this one lives in my son's room uh, because he wanted a plant and I wanted him not to kill a plant. Um, they're just super easy. So uh, it, it would be a natural conclusion to think, well, that must be my favorite plant because it doesn't take anything for it to thrive. And it's just, it's always happy. That's not my favorite plant. Not even this. Little unassuming thing is my favorite. This is an orchid. If you know anything about orchids, they're about the opposite of some pothos. As far as far as tolerances, they have very narrow tolerances for sun, water, nutrients. Too much sun, it's going to die. Too little sun, it's going to die. Uh, too much water will kill it very quickly. Too little water will kill it as well. Too much food, it's dead. Too little food, it might not die, but it's not going to bloom. And then blooming? For these to bloom, they have to have their needs met. And not just for a little while, they have to have their needs met in a sustained way. And it takes a lot, a lot 
to get an orchid to bloom. I'm just happy for them to not die, honestly. Um, and they're my favorite. I gotta say, there's nothing like an orchid's bloom. It's just breathtaking. I, I sit there and stare at it with those deep kind of, and soak in the beauty of it. But most of the time, this is what it looks like, just this. And some of the time it's like actively dying. You no, no, what, no, how, how help me help you. But this is my favorite. That's because one isn't better than the other. Just because this has more requirements doesn't make it a burden. Just because it needs my attention more in order to survive, let alone thrive, doesn't make it a weight in the plants of my house. What it makes it honestly is a joy when it's doing well. I'm so happy to be like, it's, it's surviving. Like if, a, if an orchid puts out a new leaf, like I'm, I'm ready to throw a freaking party. So for those altars that feel like they might be a burden, maybe it's been a while since you bloomed. Maybe you can, you've never bloomed that that doesn't make you any less valuable or worthy of love and attention. Just because you have a higher need requirement than someone else in the system who seems to thrive so easily, doesn't mean that you're less worthy of having your needs met. Less worthy of love. I love this way more than I love my pothos. It's so much less showy, so much more needy. I don't care. I love it for what it is. I love the pothos for what it is. They're just two different things. And that's okay. That's totally okay. So you're valuable in your system for what you are, not for what you're not. Same with those other altars. They're valuable for what they are. And that's fine. And it's fine that you're nothing like that. You still have value in the system. You still have needs that deserve to be met.